Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. So we're on another episode of Better Call Saul. This is season two, episode nine called Nailed. So the last episode we left on a pretty, well, pretty exciting note because I'm very excited to see what happens next. Kim decided to finally quit HHM and she went to talk to Howard and tell him like, hey, I'm leaving. Actually, Howard was pretty good about it and in fact, too good about it. As soon as she left, he's like, get me on the phone with Mesa Verde. She heard that and she's like, oh, screw this guy. So she went to go get a meeting with him first. She had this nice little pitch. It worked actually. Like they were, okay, we'll hire you as a lawyer. We'll fire HHM. But then stupid little Chuck, he unfortunately was able to talk these guys into it. Basically he just got into their heads about like, this is what can go wrong. But don't worry, Kim is so good. But like, maybe not. Maybe it'd be better if he stayed with us. Like all these situations and stuff and um, making himself sound really good. So Kim was very upset about it. I mean, obviously. So Jimmy, Jimmy decides to do something about it. So Chuck is having an episode because he just went into the office to do that whole meeting thing. So while Jimmy goes to visit him, he sees the Mesa Verde stacks of paperwork. So he decided to get crafty and it had to do with like the address on all the paperwork. It was like a really long process that he had to go through. He messed up the paperwork, which will mess up a lot of it because it's the wrong address for the expansion. So it's going to mess up a lot of things. So I'm super excited to see the outcome of that and how Chuck is going to handle it. And I just want to see him be embarrassed. Also with Mike too, he is doing something exciting, kind of, I think. So I think he's pretty much going to rob um, a truck that has been delivering drugs in exchange for money. And I'm pretty sure there's money in the truck now. He's making, at this point, a tire trap. So whenever it's, he's probably gonna pick a nice little place, nice little quiet area. He's gonna set the trap on when that truck's coming, pop the tires and then rob it. Let's go ahead and get into this episode and see what happens with all of that. Oop, I clicked the wrong episode, whoops. Oh yeah. He's definitely robbing. Oh, perfect area to do it. Ooh. And with a truck like that, it'd be hard to. Ooh, that's loud. It'd be hard to control. Got you good. Nice. And it's in like the middle of the desert. <laughs> it's not for you. Calm down. Is it the tires? I'm gonna be so happy if it is actually the tires. It is. There it is. Oh wait, did he cut through some of it? Ooh. But he did see his car though. Uh oh, that's not gonna be good. For 46 years, the men and women of Mesa Verde Bank and Trust have prided ourselves on personal service and percent. Uh, hold we on. Feel Excuse me, Mr. Wattel, just one moment. Uh oh. Can you give us the address of the proposed Scottsdale branch again? Certainly. It's 1216 Rosella Drive, Scottsdale, Arizona, 85262. 1216. 1216, that's correct, sir. But. In the original submission, we're seeing 1261 Rosella Drive. Mr. Commissioner, I have a copy of our notice of intent, which was published in newspapers in Arizona and New Mexico. It, it clearly states the address is 1261 Rosella Drive. Mr. Commissioner, it, it, 1261 Rosella Drive. Yes, I have a copy of the notice of intent, too. Ooh, this is embarrassing. But on the actual filing, the address reads 1216. There's so many so, numbers, I'd be like, hey. Which is it? You are mistaken, and with all due respect, you're muddy in the waters here. Muddy in the water? Chuck! Look, just look. This is kind of like so embarrassing. Like, you can't ha like you can't get it together. It's one address, you know? It's 1261. I know where my own damn bank is. But let's just all calm down. I'm sure we can see. I've got a building remodel at 1261 Rosella. I don't know where the hell 1216 is. Mr. Commissioner, I apologize. Unaccountably, there appears to be a discrepancy in our filing so the correct address is the one that appeared in the notice of intent the one sure six one yeah that they've already done the research for one two one six our folks are going that's to have to really go back bad one. Well, oh he's not doing like good. Uh, six weeks from friday we, 
Oh, damn. However, yeah, they're definitely getting fired. Oh! <gasps> he replaced them. Oh, that's so messed up. I checked. I double checked. Chuck, it happened. Now we take our licks and we move on. This doesn't just reflect on you. An office full of associates and paralegals let this get by. Wow. I mean, it's such a, like a simple mistake too. Like you switch to. This was no mistake. Numbers around. I'm surprised he figured it out. Well, clearly he will, because he thinks he's sound of mind. He's like, there's no way I would forget that. So clearly his next thought is going to be to think of Jimmy. Ooh, Hector's mad. Ooh, Hector not happy. So they have to do all the remodeling themselves. That kind of sucks. Oh, is it going to be Mesa Verde? What? Are they coming Whoa. over? I just got Mesa Verde back. Seriously? Seriously. Time to act, Jimmy. <laughs> Seriously. Holy shit, that's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> They're high class yeah, problems. Yeah, but it's a major piece of work, Jimmy. It's just, it's, it's, this is major. Hey, Kim, you got this. All yeah, right, girl, so you got it. Take Ground yourself. Sorry? Just touch the thing. The <laughs> oh, did he switch the lock? He's fuming. Kim, I was hoping to have this conversation with you and you alone. However, <laughs> I guess it's time to clear the air once and for all. Uh oh. Clearly. He sabotaged me. Buddy, hey, what are you? Please, don't bother. <laughs> you and I both know exactly what I'm talking about. No. I don't. <laughs> Yesterday morning was the worst professional humiliation of my life. A single transpositional error cost my client time and money and permanently damaged my reputation. 1261 Rosella Drive, Scottsdale, Arizona. Jimmy pulled each and every one. Mm-hmm. All night copy shop. <laughs> With a little careful cutting and Jimmy. Pasting, he came back here and put his new versions in my files. And then, the next day, my caring brother took his leave. I'm guessing... Yesterday morning, you waited until I left, then used your key to let yourself in and return the originals. No crime is complete without the cover up. Oh, come okay. on. Okay. I did all this. See, that's what? what I'm saying. Like, if you listen to him retell the story, it's like, dude, you're kind of crazy. Like, it sounds ridiculous, but, you know, with Jimmy, it's not that as ridiculous because obviously it's what happened. But, like, in Kim's position, if you're just hearing this for the first time, it'd be like, what are you talking about, dude? And like, knowing his mental state, it's like, you switched around some numbers, so what? He did it for you. Oh, shoot. As Mesa Verde's attorney of record, you have no recourse but to go to Kevin Wachtel and make a full disclosure. This, this whole song and dance is all about getting his client back. That's all this is. Not in the least. If no I can't stand the fact that my own brother stabbed me in the back. I can't stand the fact that you've deceived and ruined this fine young woman. Ruined? Oh, what is this, boy. the 1840s? What are you talking about? <laughs> She's not ruined. Jimmy could be charged with forgery, fraud, falsifying evidence, even breaking and entering. Frankly, I am sick about this. But facts are facts. So you're willing to send him to jail? You made a mistake. I did not. You're working by lantern light, squinting over 10 point tight for hour after hour, mistakenly changing True. 1261. He's capable of this, you know he is. I know he's not perfect. And Aww. I know he cuts corners. Yeah, he does. But you're the one who made him this way. Oof. Kim. You. Give it he to him. You, but all you've ever done is judge him. Dang, you never girl. In him. You never wanted him to succeed. And look what happened to him. I don't know if she believes Jimmy or not, though. Like, I think she may have an inkling that, okay, yeah, he might have done that. Jesus. Yeah, she knows. Ah, Kim, what? Yeah, she knows what she did. <laughs> it's yourself, all right? Here? Yeah. Why would you right do there. it during school time? Rhubarb, rhubarb. 
Nine o'clock. Uh-oh. Five minutes tops. You're not shooting anything until I'm clear on what's going on here. The documentary. We're making a documentary. Oh, oh, God. I was told For there what? Was a who went to school here? Rupert Holmes. That's who the documentary is. is about. The Pina Colada song. I mean, sure you do. I. If you like Pina Colada. Is that the one? If you like Pina Colada. <laughs> Uh, class of 64, he still oh. talks about it. But the school was built in 71. Mm. He was a student in the old building that used to be here. We're taking little, what do you call it, artistic liberties. He's so good though at like, it... he's good at making up lies on the spot and making it seem natural. Rupert Holmes, English? Shut the fuck up. Well, yeah, and that's some great trivia. He's I'll like, shut up. Why don't call it? They couldn't get a flag anywhere else. They had to go to a school. Up in Cedar Crest, we get plenty. You can shovel my drive if you're looking for more. <laughs> a little flirt. We got hit the other day. The truck headed south got hijacked. Someone stole a quarter million. Mm, quarter now of a million. Just flipping out. Who's the guy who won't Kill. pull the trigger? Yeah. You. Ooh, Mike. How do you know about the tires? All I can tell you is you guys aren't half as smart as you think you are. <laughs> All I did was so follow you around. It wasn't driver, that hard. The truck robbery. The cops keeping it out of the papers? The cops? They don't know about it, right? Is that what this is about? You wanted to put the cops onto Hector? Why? You are nothing to him. He forgot all about you. I haven't forgotten him. <laughs> you need to calm yourself down. And you need to take that hand out of that pocket. Uh-oh. And just so you know, it's over. I'm done with your boss. <laughs> After you left, a good Samaritan came along and said, Oh my God, oh my God. He cut the driver loose. The driver called us. We came out, got the truck. Made it like it never happened. And that good Samaritan? Uh-oh. Had to shot him in the face. Oh. See, he should have just killed the other guy. Right? Because that would have solved it, I think. He wouldn't have Hector to call. Going against him? You'd really want to make sure you've got all your I's dotted and your T's crossed. <laughs> now he's got to go double check his work. I can't believe he's having freaking Ernesto going and doing this. Like he's a damn cop or something. That guy who just walked out of here, his name is Ernie. I'm guessing he showed you my picture and asked if I was in here the other night. Now he's going to bring his boss, who's my brother. He murdered someone. Oh, what? <laughs> then I feel you. <laughs> Tell me about the cameras. Oh, uh, they go to a VCR in the back. Yeah, you might want to delete and, uh, that. Could be tricky and expensive. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to cover. So he got the printer guy. I don't think he needs to cover anything else, does he? No. Well, I'm, I believe you told my associate that he was here and he made copies. Yeah, but sorry, no. <laughs> but sorry, no. <laughs> was this man here making oh, copies? Oh, poor Ernie. I feel bad for him. When that guy showed me the picture, I thought, maybe. But now that I'm saying it again, uh, ah, sorry, don't know what to tell you. Guess I was wrong. So that blinking. Be careful. <laughs> oh. Listen, McGill, maybe we better get you home. Ernesto did not speak to me as if I were a child. Yeah. Okay. This guy is he okay? There's nothing wrong with Listen, me, McGill. Maybe we could just take a break and. Ernie, shut up. Oh, <laughs> poor Ernie. Ooh. You think about the choice you're making. That I already told you he wasn't. It is to do 11 by 14. No, excuse me. We are having a conversation here. You gotta switch it to trade four. It's easier if I show you. Look. Gosh, now he's like assaulting him. Get him out of here or I'm gonna call the cops, okay? Do not walk away Ooh. from me. We are not finished here. Done talking to you, man. Get him alone. <laughs> Ernesto, you're gonna have to- <gasps> Yeah, why isn't anybody calling 911? Jesus, you guys are idiots. Oh. 
he hit that counter hard. Oh, and that was the temple. Oh shoot, it's starting the next episode. I hate when it does this. Oh jeez, that was so bad. Oh no. I don't like Chuck and I give him a lot of crap, but he does not deserve... I hope he's okay. He might have some brain damage. He looked like he hit it hard. I don't think he'll die from it, but I don't know. With the way that those guys were... I don't know if they're gonna be calling the police anytime soon or an ambulance anytime soon. So he might die because these guys are stupid. I'm just shocked. I'm shocked that that just happened. Chuck, you know, he's annoying and he's persistent. And I can't believe he's actually trying to go through with like building an investigation against Jimmy for like fraud and all that. Now I feel bad because I'm always like kind of rooting Jimmy on <laughs> and like saying, oh yeah, he did the right thing. But it's like, it's an unforeseen consequence. And now with Mike, I'm concerned about him too because I'm pretty sure once the driver tells him what car, they'll be able to figure it out pretty quickly that it is Mike. So he might be in trouble pretty soon. And Jimmy, he might get in trouble too. I don't know. We'll have to see. I don't know. Like depending on how far this goes, like if his brother dies maybe, or that worker, he might give it up. He might say, this guy picked me off and he was in the store. Like it might lead him down a very bad path. I think that's gonna be it for today's reaction. We'll have to wait to see what happens to Chuck. I really hope he's alive at least. I know he's gonna be suffering somehow, but as long as he's alive. So yeah, um, if you enjoyed, please leave a like, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. So goodbye and have a nice life. Mm -hmm.